Thank you for having me here. I'm Dr. Vishal Segel, dental implantologist at Smilebox Dental Clinic. I finished my undergraduate in Rungsit University in 2018. I pursued my master's in implantology and dental surgery in Mahidon University and International Medical College, University of Duisburg Essen in Germany. Dentistry for me was the only option I ever had in my mind, only because it looked like a profession that could actually help change quality of life for a lot of patients. And as we can see in Thailand, oral hygiene, oral care is, is not at a level where I wish it was, so maybe I can play a small part in helping just the general population. Surgery in particular was something that I've always enjoyed ever since I started practicing on patients in the university. So once I graduated my undergraduate program, it was quite obvious, it was quite clear to me that that was what I wanted to do. So dental implants are basically a root or a tooth replacement, a tooth substitute that is made of titanium and zirconia. So it really depends on, on what material you choose, but essentially there's something that can replace an individual or a full missing tooth. So the number one most common thing is having a cavity that you haven't had filled for a long time and it just completely extends and damages your tooth to the point where it's not restorable. Other things can include trauma, getting in a bar fight, getting punched and having teeth knocked out of your mouth could be one reason. Periodontal disease where your gums and your bone are not strong enough to support your teeth. And other than this, we have a lot of other medical conditions that cause patients to lose their teeth as well. But when we're talking about a healthy patient, the best option in most cases are dental implants, but there are many other alternatives. So we can talk about dental bridges, which means we reduce adjacent teeth and put in a fixed bridge. There are removable prosthesis where you have dentures that you can remove and put them back on. So dental implants are one of the treatment options, but you do have alternatives as well. Our teeth are dynamic, they're never in one place and once we lose a tooth and we're not replacing it, the adjacent teeth are pretty much going to collapse into the gap. The upper tooth, the occluding tooth, is going to sort of erupt downwards into the gap. So it kind of messes up your entire occlusion and it makes it that much harder for you to replace the tooth in the future as well. First of all, we'll have to know thorough medical history. We need to rule out any potential diseases that might contraindicate a, a placement of an implant. After we've gone through your medical evaluation, next comes the dental examination. So we need to make sure for a couple of things to be where they need to be in order to place a dental implant. Starting with obviously the bone because that's where your implant would go. So we need to have a good quality bone. We need to have an adequate amount of bone. The next thing we look at is your gums. The gums quality and quantity are also just as important as the bone. And Finally, we look at the status of your neighboring teeth or your overall oral hygiene to see if you're a suitable candidate for dental implants. The first step in getting a dental implant, like I said, is a thorough medical history followed by a dental examination. The dental examination is going to comprise of us taking a look at the area where you, want, where you would like to get a dental implant, evaluating the bone and soft tissue and then checking the status of the neighboring and adjacent teeth. This will be followed by a dental radiograph which would be a two-dimensional radiograph followed by a three-dimensional CBCT to see the dimensions of the bone in every single view. Make sure that there is enough bone material to support a dental implant. Let's say in a certain case there is not enough bone or there's not enough gums, which often is the case in case that you've lost a tooth for a long period of time. We will have to evaluate the need for additional surgical procedures such as bone augmentation, bone grafting, a missing upper tooth, upper molar. We might have to lift your, your maxillary sinus prior to placing an implant. So it's all about preparing a site that's strong enough, good enough to place a dental implant. With today's technology, it is possible for you to walk into the clinic without a single tooth in your mouth and then walk out on the same day with a full set of teeth as well. Dental implants, it's really growing, so you can replace anywhere from one missing tooth to a couple of missing teeth to an entire edentulous jaw. All on four implants are actually a, a protocol. It's a protocol of placing a full, uh, restoring a fully edentulous ridge with a prosthesis which sits on top of four implants in the jaw. So basically it's called a fixed detachable prosthesis. We place four implants in your jaw based on ideal locations and then we load them with the prosthesis. Talking in terms of how long an implant lasts, it really depends on two things. The first thing is the quality and quantity of your bone on the day of the implant placement. 
And then the second thing is probably the most important thing is how the patient takes care of the implant when once they've gotten it. So a dental implant, much like a natural tooth, needs a lot of care, needs a lot of attention. So you need to make sure that you're brushing your teeth at least twice a day. You're flossing around your dental implants and you're getting a regular checkup every six months. So in case there's any problem where we can catch it quite early and then, you know, just, just take care of it in the earlier stages, which is much easier if the disease progresses to a much more advanced stage. And in terms of the pain, I would say a dental implant is no different from maybe getting a tooth extraction. You would feel a little bit of pain when we're giving you a local anesthetic, but other than that, it's very painless. Postoperatively, there are mild symptoms, but we give you painkillers for that. So there's nothing, there's nothing too much to be worried about. So as a dentist, as someone who's in the medical field, the most important thing when I'm choosing a dental implant or a brand is to see if there's any research backing up that particular brand. And these are done by various different companies. For example, if we talk about a particular brand like Strawman, we know that there is data, there's research backing it up for over 20 years now. The success rates are over 95%. So that would be a brand that I'm very comfortable working with. So whenever there's a new brand that comes in or a new brand that's just been introduced in Thailand, for example, the first thing I would do is I would look for literature that backs up the use of that implant. If there's not enough data, if there's not enough evidence, then I might be a little hesitant at first. But once the research, the data starts coming out, for me mainly that's how I choose a dental implant brand. The first visit that you come to Smilebox Dental Clinic, we will be taking a comprehensive examination of your oral cavity. We'll be taking the two-dimensional and three-dimensional x-rays and fabricating an entire treatment plan for you. We'll also take impressions, molds of your upper and lower teeth to fabricate any instruments we might need that help assist a placing of the implants. This will be followed by our second visit, which would be a roughly about three to four days apart, where we actually place your dental implants. And this will be followed in about two weeks, where we monitor that all of your soft tissue healing is going as planned and remove any sutures that may need to be removed. So roughly about two, two and a half weeks and you should be good with the dental implant placement.